Okay, in this video we are going to uh, solve a quiz on the law of sines and cosines. Um, I'm going to use my Inspire. The questions are down here. If you want to pause and just solve all of them, I'll put timestamps to uh, when I get the answers, I guess, um, in case you just want to like bounce to those. And uh, let's get started. So uh, in the first problem we have triangle NPR, which looks like this. What do we know? We know side N, side P, angle R. So we got this information. And if you look at that, that is definitely a side angle side situation. So we can use the law of cosines on that. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to jot down all the given information. So I know there's an angle N and angle P. I know angle R. There's a side N, side P, which I know both of, and then a side R. So what I want to do is I want to solve for side R first. I'm going to use the law of cosines to do that. So what I do is I rearrange it so that it's already solved for R. So r is equal to the square root of, so it's going to be n squared plus p squared minus 2np cosine of r. And then uh, I'm going to use the law of cosines again to find an angle, and then I'll use it again to find the other angle, actually. I think it's safer to do that, so I don't have to use uh, a mistake that I've made already. Um, and I can use uh, all the angles to check myself. Uh, so first, I'll find angle n. So I'm thinking uh, n squared is p squared plus r squared minus 2pr cosine of n, and I've solved that for n. So n is the inverse cosine of um, n squared minus p squared minus r squared over negative 2pr. And then I'm going to do the same thing for p. So p is the inverse cosine of p squared minus n squared minus r squared over negative 2 n r. It's just the last two variables in the numerator and denominator have to be the same when you uh, use the formula this way. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to use a calculator. What I think is a good idea, and it's going to save us a lot of time on this quiz, uh, make sure you're in degree mode, so doc 72 if you're not, and change it, um, is I'm going to define two functions. So law of cosines, LOC, uh, to find a side. And so I'm going to give that a, b, and then angle c. So I'm finding uh, side c, I guess, uh, is going to be equal to uh, the square root. So square root. So colon equals, by the way, is control and then the templates on the handheld. Uh, so square root of a squared plus b squared minus 2a times b. So that's not optional multiplication. And then the cosine of C. So that'll find me angle C. Nope, sorry, that'll find side C. And then LOC uh, A to find an angle. Give that A, B, C. So these are all sides in this case, and let's just find angle A, right? So uh, it'll be the inverse cosine of uh, A squared minus, so this is, I'm going to find angle A in this case, minus B squared minus C squared over negative 2 b times c. So again, not optional. Uh, and press enter. Okay, so now let's solve the problem. So uh, we want to use our formula. So law of cosines, we're finding a side, and it's going to be 26, 34, and 34. And this should find me side c, uh, which in this case is side r. So this, ooh, let's get a, uh, let's get a decimal there. Okay, so I have 19.138. I'm going to keep going. So I'm going to find angle N, and then I'll just write them all in. So uh, use the var key. Again, it's like the best thing you can do is get used to using the var key. Uh, I need to feed this all three sides. So 26, because I'm finding N. So you put the first thing first. 34, and then this thing that I found. And then uh, let's find P. So uh, it's going to be log cosine's angle, so it's 34, 26, and then this side that we found. And we get that. Okay, so let's put these in with our work. So we get that. We get this. And then we get this. And then I'm going to fill those in in the uh, kind of summary. So the summary is for your teacher who's grading it, and they will love you if you do that. Um, so we want to summarize no matter what. Put in the givens, put in what you solved. Uh, usually the answer key looks like that. It's great. 
Okay, now we need to find the area. I'm gonna use Heron's formula for um, for all of these. So Heron's says that the area is equal to the square root of s, s minus a, s minus b, s minus c, um, and then close the square root. And then that's true such that s is equal to uh, the semi-perimeter, so half the perimeter, so a plus b plus c divided by two. I'm gonna define that on the calculator and then use that on every problem. So I'm gonna call it Heron's uh, ABC set equal to. So square root of S multiplication, S minus A, S minus B, S minus C. Okay, and then I need to tell what S is such that, so such that is control equals, I always go one to the left, it's like the slick way to get there, um, S equals a plus B plus C divided by two. All right, let's find the area of this thing. So Heron's, which again is in the bar key, 26, 34, and then this 19.138. Get that. So I now have the area. And so it took me a little while to get these formulas down, but now that I have them, I'm gonna use them uh, over and over again. So let's move on to the next problem. So we have a Triangle BTS, and in this case, we actually just have all three sides, so this is ideal. Let's write down what we know. So we know the three sides, and so we're actually just going to find the angles. I'm gonna write it down. Um, so it's side, 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 use the law of cosines. Um, okay, so angle B is gonna be the inverse cosine of B squared minus T squared minus S squared over negative two TS. Um, and then T is the same idea where we just like switch the T variable first. So T squared minus B squared minus S squared over negative two BS. And then uh, S is the same. So inverse cosine, S squared minus B squared minus T squared. Okay, uh, and now we're gonna use a calculator. I'm gonna insert, so doc four, I'm gonna insert a new calculator, not a new problem, because I want to be able to press var and still have these formulas. And we're looking for angles, and so it's 18, 29, 38, and I'm gonna put a decimal or control enter, um, will give me angle B. And then I'm just gonna kind of repeat this. So 29, the order of the last two doesn't matter, it's just that you're finding the angle associated with the first side that you put in. So this will be T, and then, uh, I gotta make this 38, and then if I make that 38, I need this to be 29. So those are my angles. So uh, approximate, 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 and then we just fill them in on the table. And then uh, this is like the ideal scenario for using Heron's formula. So Heron's of 18, 29, 38. So fill that in. And we're done. So side, side, side is probably the easiest type, I guess. Um, okay, let's take a look at another one. So we have a triangle LGT. Uh, so we draw that, and then we know angle L, angle G, and side L. So if I label that up, you can see that that is angle, angle, side. And angle, angle, side uses the law of sines. Okay, so, uh, and it's like straightforward law of signs because it's not the ambiguous case. So let's fill in what we know. And then uh, side G will be the first thing that we solve for. So I'm gonna write the law of signs ratio. Uh, actually, let's, let's just find the missing angle. Um, so doc for calculator, if you wanna do it, you can just do it in your head, but 180 minus 74 minus 43, okay. Now, write down your ratio that will solve for G. So I like to put that in the numerator. G over the sine of G is equal to L over the sine of L. And then uh, just kind of cross multiply. So G is L sine of G over the sine of L. Um, and then we could do the same thing uh, for side T, right? So T over the sine of T is L over the sine of L and then cross multiply it again. So we get T is L sine of T over sine of L. So I'm gonna take advantage of the structure of that when I use my calculator. 
Um, so if I'm finding G, for example, it's going to be 33 sine of angle G, which is 43, over the sine of 74, which is L. I'm going to do uh, put a decimal there to get a decimal answer. And then I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to take this and paste it down and change the 43 into a 63. And that'll tell me T. And now let's kind of fill these in. So uh, G is approximately that. T is approximately that. Let's fill it in in our, our summary. And then let's find the area. So I'm going to use herons again. So the sides are 33, and then this, and this. So I get 344.208. OK, uh, let's move on to part D. So in this one, we have SWV. Um, we have side S, angle S, and side W. So this is actually. Um, this is angle side side, and I don't like this picture for angle side side, so I'm going to erase it and draw the picture that I do like. Okay, so this, now I need to like think about the scenarios, right, because it's angle side side. So I uh, look, and S is definitely less than W from the given information, which means I need to calculate uh, the height. So the height is going to be uh, W sine of S. So let me start a new calculator page. And I want to do W, which is 27 sine of S is 29. Uh, OK, so the height is approximately 13.090. OK, so now I have this inequality. The height is the smallest, side opposite, and the other side. That means that you get two triangles. If there's two triangles, immediately write down two sets of information and then fill in the givens for both of them because they'll be the same. And then there's only one thing you can do. You can solve for angle W using law of sines. So let's start doing that. So sine of W over W is sine of 29 or sine of S over S. And then we cross multiply and take the inverse sine. And now I want to actually do this. OK, so it's going to be the inverse sine of W is 27 sine of 29 over 21. And I want a decimal, so I'll put a decimal. So I get 38.560. So let's fill that in. So that's going to go in my first set of triangle information. And then the key to being successful on this is immediately find the supplement. So I'm going to do 180 minus that to get that and put it in the second set of triangle information. And then once you've done that, you just have two separate problems to solve. So I'm going to solve the first problem by finding the missing angle, then use the law of sines to find the side, then I'll be done with that. Uh, I'll find the area, I guess. And then I'm going to do the second problem. So uh, right now what I'm going to do is find the missing third angle in that first triangle. So 180 minus 29 minus this. So notice I'm using the values on the calculator, not the values I wrote down. That's important. You should use stored values. It's kind of a weird thing that you end up doing. Um, but I get this. OK. And now I'm going to use the law of science to find side V in this triangle. So to do that, um, I know that V is going to be S times the sine of V over the sine of S. OK, let's solve that. 21 um, is S. The sine of V is the angle that I just found over the sine of S is 29. So I get 40.036. So that's approximately 40.036. And let's also put it in the givens. Not in the givens, in our summary. And then I need the area. So let's use herons. The var key is what you should really use there. 21, 27, and this that we just got and press enter. So 262.032. OK, and now we move on and do the second triangle, right? So there's a missing angle. So I'll do 180 minus 29 minus, let's find that 141 in the list. OK, so we get 9.559. 9.559. 
Turns out I'm actually not that great at rounding. Um, so I put a little subscript there because we're gonna have to do some calculations that look exactly like the previous calculations. And on paper, I want them to look different. So I'm using a subscript because I'm in triangle two. Um, so I've got that, I'm gonna set it up. So side V sub two is see how the work looks identical to the work above it. Um, so what I'll do is actually just uh, steal this and then delete this and put this angle here and press enter. And there you go. So we get approximately 7.194. And then all that's left for this triangle is to find the area, which I can use herons for. So the bar key, herons, and then 21, 27, and paste. And we get 47.081. So that's our area. And we're on to the next problem. Okay, so in this problem, we have um, NHL. Let's see what we have. NHL. Uh, like this. This is actually, so it's the ambiguous case, but uh, it's an obtuse angle. And that case is a little bit easier uh, because you can't have two triangles. So, you know, it's either one or none. Um, and since uh, the side opposite is bigger than the other side, we definitely have one and we can just solve it. So let's write down. These are the names of things. These are the things that we know. Um, so we need to find uh, angle L kind of immediately. So that's gonna be the inverse sine of L times sine of N over N. And let's use a calculator for that. Doc four, three, Okay, so I'm doing the inverse sine of L, which is 27, sine of 93 over 36, control enter or put a decimal. So I get 48.501, so 48.501, and that should go in there. And then uh, do 180 minus 93 minus what we just got. And so we can fill that in, 38.499. And then we need to find side H. So uh, H is going to be equal to N sine of H over uh, the sine of N. And back to the calculator. So 36 sine of H, which is what we just found, over the sine of n which is 93 so we get 22.441 so 22.441 and then we fill that in there and then we need to find the area so again heron's formula is just killing it on this quiz heron's formula uh so it's 36 27 and the thing we just found so 302.533 and that's our area and then there's one last problem to do. It's a lot of sines cosines quiz. So like I would expect there to be a triangle that has no solution. Um, so I'm expecting the next one to be that. It might not be, but I think it probably is. So we have GMC, we have a side angle pair and another side. So it's definitely the ambiguous case. So we have this um, side opposite is less than the other side. So let's just do good work, even though I feel like I know what's happening. Um, so we have this, and then um, opposite is less than other, so I need to calculate the height. So the height, um, let's see, doc four, the height is gonna be uh, 27 sine of 75, so 26.08. So 27 sine of 75, which is approximately 26.08. 26.08 is actually bigger than the other than the side opposite, which means there's no triangles. So uh, in that case, I would just jot down uh, this. So since side opposite the given angle is less than the height, there are zero triangles and we are done. All right, so that's the whole thing. Now, one thing that we didn't do is we didn't check anything as we went. There's kind of a, a useful way that we can check. So if I go back to uh, say this triangle, right? Um, if I use so I'm in a new thing. So let me doc for new calculator page. All right. So if I try to find angles using this and the things that I have, so I have like 36, 22.441 and 27. This should give me approximately 93. 
it's not going to be exact because we have to round. Um, if I do it again and use 22.441, 36, and uh, 27, this should give me approximately 38.499. Pretty close. Um, and I, you know, obviously I can do it again. So I can keep doing this. Uh, this is a, a really fast way that you can check because you know the law of cosines needs to give you the angles if you know the sides. So if you're not getting something that's really close to the angle you think you should get, you pretty much know that you're wrong. So you can see in all cases, I got something very close to what I thought. So that triangle is probably correct. Um, I just wanted to throw that in. It's definitely a way you can check. Okay, so uh, that's the whole thing. If you go through it and you don't explain anything and you're not talking, um, you can shave quite a bit of time off of this. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.